Hello everybody, God bless you. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Pastor Shanique Beckford and today I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to share with you 20 techniques or 20 signs that your church is a cult or that your church is actually practicing witchcraft. So I want you to stay tuned. This is going to be very informative, very educational. It's going to be a wonderful video. But before I go any further, I want you guys to go ahead and make sure you like this video. Leave a comment. Comment more than once so that that way YouTube's algorithm can share the video so that many more persons can be blessed by this video make sure you are subscribed and hit the share button share with a friend all right so let's just go ahead and read the clip and let's come back hello everybody welcome back I am pastor Shadi Beckford so today as I said earlier and based on the title of this video you can see what I'll be sharing with you guys I'm going to be talking to you about 20 signs or techniques that your pastor uses or your church uses that can help you to identify if you are a part of a cult or if witchcraft is being practiced or used on members or said persons, whoever it is within the church organization. All right. So number one is number one and these these signs the signs i'm going to share with you guys they're not necessarily in any set um they're not set in any uh, what should i say it's not it, it, i'm just going to throw the signs out there all right so number one is isolation if there is witchcraft within a part witchcraft being practiced in a particular church or if the church is actually a cult organization you're going to experience isolation now isolation is the loss of reality and this is induced by physical separation from society so they're going to brainwash you or charm you into believing that you should not associate yourself with persons outside in the world you should just take yourself into a place of isolation because you are no longer like them or you're no longer a part of them so if you are being isolated or pushed into a place where you're being isolated from the outside world then something is definitely wrong you you should not be told that you are so saved or you're so sanctified that you should not sit in a place or come to a place where you can socialize with persons who are not a part of that organization so once you feel as though you are being told you have to isolate from everyone else who is not a part of that organization or church then something is definitely wrong so isolation is a us is a is a is a is a fact is a key that you have to pay attention to all right and a lot of churches actually do that they'll tell you once you're a member of this church or cult or whatever organization they'll tell you you are not allowed you're not permitted to visit other churches you're not permitted to go to certain uh, conferences certain uh, concerts or you're not permitted to go and socialize with anybody else so this is definitely something that you have to pay attention to number two is you have hypnosis and once I say hypnosis I know some persons are saying oh this is a bit deep um, hypnosis isn't something that is practiced in modern day church but I want you to understand that even though it is hypnosis that is being done it is not necessarily brought across as actual hypnosis no this is a state this is a state of high suggestibility induced by hypnosis often thinly disguised as meditation so there are some churches they disguise is a hypnosis as meditation and then there are some other churches they use they they use some other terminology for meditation because they don't believe in meditation or they don't believe in using that term meditation or hypnosis so you have to be able to discern the difference between the words and what is actually being done and the reason why this hypnosis is being done I've just researched the whole psychological explanation behind hypnosis and this is what it says it says traditional hypnosis is when a hypnotist puts a person into an alternate state that opens them up to a command so this is what the church does this is what many pastors and cult leaders or witchcraft operators do they put you into a state a 
alternate state, a state of being hypnotized. And so this opens you up to being vulnerable. It opens you up to take certain levels of command. So once you're in that state, whatever they tell you to do, you're able to do it. And this is why many pastors can, you know, um, prostitute, can rob, can take money, assets and things from people or get them to sign certain documents because they're in a state where they're not thinking from a clear a clear state of mind so hypnosis is not that thing where you dangle a key in front of somebody it's not that thing where you stare at a, 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 a maze and you just become totally blurry and just lost in it no that's not hypnosis hypnosis is it is done from a place or it is done in a state where you don't even necessarily know that it is being done in the same way a psychologist can sit and get into your mind and find those things that you never knew that you were going through is the same thing where hypnosis is concerned so you have to be very careful when it comes to this all right number three is uh, love bombing and i actually found this information online from a site a psychological site that shares about cult churches and i found it very very i found the information very re relevant and important so i just made a few tweaks to it so the next one i want to share number three is love bombing what this is it is a sense of fam it's a sense of family and belonging contrived through hugging kissing and flattery so what this organizations will do is they will you know flatter you they will love on you hug you kiss you make you feel as though you are welcomed make you feel as though you are loved make you feel like you are a part of a community and so you definitely feel that sense of acceptance because at first of course they're going to treat you that way and once you get in then that is absolutely where it will begin so that is love bombing do not be fooled by their flattery and their love do not be fooled by their acceptance tans and their hugs and all of that you have to be very careful all right uh, number four number four is removal of privacy so we're getting into deep waters number four is removal of privacy now what this is it is the loss of ability to evaluate or being entitled to one's own opinion this is logically achieved by preventing private contemplation so by removing the removing the sense of privacy or removal of privacy they're simply Dear Pastor, your leader, your church or organization, that witchcraft place or cult place is simply trying to say or simply trying to remove your privacy where you are not allowed, you're not permitted to have any form of um, evaluation. You can't evaluate things before you make decisions. You're not permitted to make decisions or to evaluate or think logically on certain things. You are requested or it is expected of you that you will just say yes to everything or you will go along with everything so the ability where you can contemplate through certain things it is not allowed if they say jump you just have to ask how high if they say run you just have to ask how far and that's just what they require of you your yes is required and not your nose i'm gonna share some more with you i'm gonna go deep and share some more stuff with you so after removal of privacy then we are going to go to sleep de sleep deprivation and fatigue now this is disorientation and a vulnerability created by prolonged mental and physical activity um, based on how much work you have to do where you are not getting or receiving adequate sleep or rest so due to the excess work that you're being you're you're being given um, both physically and mentally it pushes you to a place of exhaustion and you're also not getting as much rest as you actually should get so if you are a part of an organization and your life is totally consumed by what you're being given to do that you don't have time for your personal work you don't have time for your family and you're being mentally disturbed you're being mentally distressed mentally fatigued where you can't get any form of rest so even though you are at home you still can't get rest because mentally it's almost like your mind is running a thousand miles you have to be very mindful of these things sometimes it's not just that you are committed to the work you're doing 
because the truth is some of you you're very disciplined you're very hard working you're very um, submissive to leadership to your organization but the fact that you're actually working with these people sometimes you can be um, used you can be used because of your good heart and your goodness and so sometimes you have to be very mindful and very discerning that you're not just being used or taken an advantage of because you're good at what you do or you are disciplined to whatever it is that you are doing all right so that's deprivation and fatigue and loss of sleep then we're gonna take it a bit further to meta communication I don't know if you guys have ever heard the term meta communication before but this is what it actually is it is subliminal messages implanted by stressing certain keywords or phrases in long confusing lectures or conversation the actual meaning for meta communication is and i want to share so you guys can understand where i'm going with this one this one is very important and i'm sure that a lot of you guys have actually experienced this before but you don't know what it is so the definition is um, auxiliary or convert messages usually conveyed in the form of subtle gestures so meta communication is usually conveyed in the form of subtle gestures movements or facial expressions about procedural aspects or dynamics what I'm simply trying to say is there are certain organizations they have taught you and indoctrinated you into certain things where you just know what is what without there being any form of verbal written communication so just by looking at their faces you know what is what just by a particular gesture of raising the eye or scratching the head or looking at them a certain way uh, clearing the throat or just a serious stare piercing into your soul you know exactly what is what so for example you are a part of a church or an organization where uh, yeah. someone messes with little children or something along that line but when the police come or somebody comes to investigate the issue the moment you see persons begin to give you that stare or that look you know that you are not supposed to say anything at all this is what predators and rapers and kidnappers and molesters this is this is what they do meta communication when you molest or you 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 know when you molest or you assault a little child just by the fact that that person your molester is going to look you in the eyes you know that you don't dare say anything or else a dead you dead so this is what many churches do many organizations and cults do they have meta communication so by the time you see your pastor give you that look you know you're not supposed to do this you're not supposed to do that you're just not supposed to get involved in certain things so you have to be very careful of this and this is definitely a, it's, it's a manipulation game it's a mind control game it puts you in a place where you're always on edge you're walking around on eggshells because each time your pastor looks at you or makes a certain gesture you feel uncomfortable you feel entrapped in a certain space a lot of people are going through this and they literally do not know what it is they just feel as though it has to do with the chain of command or respect or honor no honor is not control if you are anybody you know is experiencing this or you have experienced it i want you to go ahead and just drop a comment in the comment section let me know what you think about this all right let's take it further so the next one is no questions no questions no question it's automatically acceptance you are you are required rather to have automatic acceptance of belief accomplished by discouraging questions if you are a part of a church or, or an organization you're not permitted you're not allowed to ask questions then something is wrong there's no way that you can be a part of a church and your pastor your leader or whoever it is in that organization is going to tell you that whatever they say is what goes you are not allowed to ask any form of question Questions. if you do not understand something you just have to accept it just the way it is then you have to begin to question the fact that they are telling you that you should not ask any questions that is something in itself for you to question so there's some of you you can't question why do we believe in this why do we believe in that you are entitled to ask questions you are entitled to having a form of understanding about where you are worshiping in fact before you join any 
church or any organization or take a sense of membership or form of membership you have to ask questions to know what is the culture of this church what are the beliefs of this church what are the morals what are the code of conduct what are the core values or the core objectives of this church or organization before you become a member so never feel as though I never allow any leader any pastor any church to make you feel like you should never ask questions all right no the next one is confusing doctrine confusing doctrine confusing doctrine is it's it's pretty straightforward if you are being taught something that does not make sense you're being taught something that is anti-god anti the holy spirit or it doesn't make sense it doesn't come in alignment with the word of god then this is something that you have to begin to pray about and ask the holy spirit about be careful that you're being indoctrinated by a false doctrine something that totally goes against the inspired written word of god so you have to be very careful of this the next one is rejection of old values so you are required to have acceptance of a new of a new lifestyle accelerated by constantly denouncing your former lifestyle your former values or morals or what you are accustomed to so in other words if you join a certain organization or a certain church you have to renounce or denounce everything that you were ever taught before you have to renounce and denounce who you were when you were a part of this church or this ministry then something is wrong because they don't want you to renounce the old values your own morals your old work ethics you're denouncing everything that you once knew everything that you once taught so i guess you can make capacity to learn their old uh, false doctrine so if you are being told to renounce certain things that you grew up in don't get me wrong there are certain things that you have to unlearn to learn because there are some things that we were taught growing up that does not make sense it's not biblical it's not scriptural it has nothing to do with god so sometimes the more mature you come or the the, the deeper you come into god we have to unlearn certain things but when the things you are being told you have to unlearn does not make sense goes against your human rights goes against your rights as a human being to think to process to evaluate to contemplate to make decisions then something is definitely wrong and you are in a cult and not a church you're being charmed you're being witchcraft it's not a church and the next one is confession so if you are a part of a church and you are required to make certain confessions such as destruction of personal egos increased vulnerability to new teaching and recruits weakness revealed through sharing innermost secrets you have to be careful of this as a pastor as a leader i encourage persons to heal on their own terms heal on their own timing to get over certain things through counseling and deliverance on their own time it doesn't matter how much as a pastor i want people to be healed and delivered there are just certain things you cannot rush sometimes healing takes time so someone can actually be delivered no sometimes deliverance as a matter of fact is over a period of time sometimes healing is, is over a period of time so sometimes there are certain things that people go through and you are not required you are not always going to heal overnight if you were molested raped by your father you're going through traumatic life experiences it is not required or it is not a must that you're going to get up and heal overnight there are some things you're going to take time to heal especially where the things of the soul and the heart is concerned the heart and the soul requires time for healing you don't just heal overnight so what they are saying is that when you come to a place of confession when you come into a place of confession you're going to share your areas of weakness you're going to share your innermost secrets and you have to be careful about this sometimes not everything is supposed to be shared it doesn't matter how much you entrust some people sometimes there are some things that you just have to work out with God and God alone or until you have grown to a place where you can trust a pastor trust a leader trust a group of people to share certain things that you have done in the past especially if you were in the wrong or you are shameful of this thing you have to, you have to entrust these persons before you can you can be open enough to share or reveal or expose certain weaknesses or certain things that you have done in the past and confessing usually leads to something else I don't believe that as a Christian you have to confess certain things you don't need to confess certain things to your pastor you don't need to confess certain things to your church there are some organizations if you have sinned or you have done certain things you have to go in front of that church and you have to confess 
confess what you did you have to go to your past and you have to confess what you did i do not believe in that if an individual is a part of a leadership or a part of the clergy and they want to openly say that this is what i have did i have repented i seek your forgiveness because i was a leader representing you as a church then that is up to them but if you are just a random person within the church it doesn't matter what role you play it is your it is always going to be your decision if you want to make a actual confession to the church or to the pastor hey you confess to god work out your fears work out your sin and your own salvation with fear and trembling with god not with man no i do believe that confession leads to something else and the next point i want to share is guilt after you have confessed then there is guilt this only happens in the cult churches the churches that have nothing to do with god so this is what they do where guilt is concerned there are teachings of external salvation reinforced by exaggerating sins or former lifestyle and so um your obedience to the group is maintained your obedience and loyalty to the, to the group is maintained by threatening your soul and your life and your forgiveness so when you confess and you share certain things that you were once a part of or you once used to do know that they know this information about you it is held over your head so there's external salvation where if you do not do what they do if you, if you don't do what they demand or do what they say then you are seen as someone who is sinful you're seen as someone who should not be a part of their group and if you're not a part of their group it means that you are condemned it means that you are so sin chanting and singing chanting and singing is not something that is necessarily always done visibly sometimes these things are done sometimes it's actually done in plain sight it is disguised but you're not able to see it just by the plain eye sometimes you're, you recite you declare certain things you do certain things but you don't even realize what you're actually doing or sometimes these are uh, chanting ri um, rituals and things are done when people when they when the churches are the leaders whoever want to initiate you into a deeper level of authority or whatever it is selling your soul whatever it is so you just have to be very careful and very mindful of what you're actually getting involved in some of these churches they're not hiding and doing what they're doing it is actually being done in plain sight without the spirit of discernment or spiritual eyes then you will actually not be able to see what is actually being done all right so another one is change of diet disorientation and increased susceptibility to emotional arousal achieved by depriving the nervous system of necessary nutrients so sometimes when these things you are being enforced into certain things you have to adopt to certain things it feels abnormal sometimes these things actually messes with your mental space it ends up messing with your diet it ends up messing with your nervous system and it just affects your it affects your diet overall so sometimes a lot of people they lose their appetite they stop eating they begin to lose weight and it just begins to affect them overall so there are more there are more, there's more i want to share with you there's actually more leave a comment if you can relate to any of this by the way all right so then there is controlled approval controlled approval is vulnerability and confusion maintained by alternately rewarding and punishing similar actions you have a dire need for approval because of confusion and vulnerability if you are being pushed into a place of vulnerability especially because you have confessed certain things especially because you feel as though you need to be a part of their group or their organization you need their approval before you do anything this can this is definitely something that can affect your spiritual spirituality it can affect you as an individual you do not need man's approval for certain things of course when you honor and you respect your leader you see counseling for some things and that is fine but when you have to get approval for every single thing that you do in your life and if you do not get approval you are seen as not being submissive not being obedient then something is terribly wrong and you have to you have to see god on that all right the next one is dress when you're a part of a cult a part of a church where you're being witchcraft um charm whatever it is eventually your dress code is going to change for many of them your dress code changes you are 
sometimes it starts off very subtle sometimes it's not bad because they don't do certain things to make it that obvious so sometimes it doesn't have to affect your dress codes but then there are some they actually start they're very subtle for some it's the simple you can't wear makeup you can't process your hair you can't wear jewelry you can't wear uh, false hair and that's one level and then for some they start off like that so first you have to remove the the jewelry the makeup the false hair you have to go back to being um natural not being permed or anything like that to the point where you can't wear certain clothes to the point where you just have to wear a certain um what you call it earth tone pullover thing that makes you look like i don't even know what until you become like a zombie a total walking dead you have to pay attention to these things guys any man that is in christ he's a free man where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there's no need for control and manipulation so never feel as though you need anybody to put you in that place the next one is flaunting of hierarchy the flaunting of higher hierarchy so acceptance of cult authority produced by promising advancement or promotion uh, power and salvation is very um as something that is very important you need to be aware of in other words many are deceived because of promise promotion or gaining power from being in a certain position or a certain office so whenever you find that they are flaunting hierarchy if you do this you can come to this level if you do that i can promote you into this office you have to be very careful so okay um give us all your assets and i'll promote you to this kill this man and i'll promote you to this listen there are some things that are happening that people do not even know of i'm gonna share a particular instance with you guys just hold on just a second let me just do three more and then i'll share it with you guys all right the next one is finger pointing so there's a sense of there's a false sense of righteousness created by pointing out the shortcomings of the outside world and other cults or churches so what these churches do is they point fingers at everybody else in other words they are the only ones who are truly saved they're the only ones who are really going to heaven everybody else is going to hell everybody else is sinful every other church the pastors are witchcraft workers so they victimize themselves and they point out everybody else because they want to build a form of um they want to make people feel comfortable that I'm the only one who is truly saved i'm the only one who is truly going to heaven this is the right way to pray this is the right way to do this thing called church you have to be careful when you're going to a church where they make every other church seem like they are not of god then something is wrong as a pastor i'm not the only one who is going to heaven my church is not the only church that can bring you healing and give you help there are many other churches that are in the region in the country that can actually do what i'm doing and even probably do what i'm doing even better so you have to be careful of this two more replacement of relationships and this is something that is very deep very serious so replacement of relationships what this is pre-cult families are destroyed by arranging cult marriages and families so what this does is they pull you to a place of isolation from your previous friends and families this is why oftentimes you hear that people are moving out of their family house moving out from their wives their children their actual families to join a certain organization because now you have to renounce everything that you once knew you're no longer like your family you're no longer part of your family so you can no longer associate with them you have to take yourself away from them because they're the sheep they're the goat and you're the sheep whatever it is that they tell people so if you're being pulled away from your family there's nothing like family i don't care how anointed you are how prophetic you are how saved you are there's nothing like family your family always comes first so if you're a part of a group or a church that is pulling you from your family then you have to begin to reevaluate with everything about being a part of this actual church or being a part of this denomination all right the final one i want to share with you guys is financial commitment when you come into a certain church and you are being it is being impressed or enforced upon you about certain form of financial commitment and i'm not just talking about people saying oh you should pay your tithe tithing is very good no i'm not talking about you being a partner at the end of the month something that you can afford no i'm talking about certain levels of commitment increased dependence i'm talking about you coming to a place where you are required to give them your entire finances your entire assets your house your 
car everything and then you become completely dependent on them this is what a lot of ministries do a lot of churches do there was one particular church in Montego Bay where all the members all the people they well not all but there were some people that gave over their health insurance there are some people that gave over their cars their houses their properties to this particular pastor and then he would in turn take care of them you have to be very mindful of this you cannot be giving over everything every single thing to a church and then the church will take care of you no you do not need to go to these extremes and when I say you have to I mean you have to or your salvation becomes invalid pay attention to these things pay keen attention to these things how can you sign over your health insurance to another pastor so you have to be very careful of these things so you have to be careful of giving over everything that you have worked hard to some of these pastors and then you begin to live a life of dependency on them so another one let me share this final one another one is your children you have to be careful of leaving your children with pastors with leaders where you're being told oh you have to bring your children because we want to teach them we want to train them about certain things because you have no idea what some of these uh, leaders pastors or people will actually do to your children so you have to be very 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 careful of this so do not allow anyone to put you in a state of hypnotization, a place of you're being charmed. Sometimes, as I said, these things happen and people don't even realize it is happening. Let's take, for instance, the Sir Excellency False Prophet Man from Montego Bay. How did he get people to give over their houses, their cars, their assets, their health insurance and all of these things to him as a as a whoever he was how does he get people to come to a place where he can say to a man um tell people to bring cows to bring animals because they're going to go on the ark how can he say to someone like the man that was there okay kill this one because we need blood and blah 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 how, how do you tell someone just to kill this person and they kill them kill another person and they kill them you listen no god for yourself if you are going through if you are in a church where you see these subtle signs do not wait for it to get worse do not be afraid to run there are so many people who are experiencing these things and worse and they're still seeking god if you see these signs what are you seeking god about run for your life protect yourself protect your family there are too many who have died at the hands of false prophets cult leaders witchcraft workers who seem or pretend to be a pastor so i wanted to share this with you guys i hope that this has blessed you or opened your eye to a certain degree if it has please leave a comment below share the video with a friend share it as many persons as you can remember to subscribe um stay tuned for more content and more video coming up on this channel i'm prophetess shani beckford thanks for watching and have a wonderful rest of the day